Yeah, I got a bone to pick with this guy. You know, I'm, I'm just tired of his ass. Got to be honest, because you know he's trying to get back into some good graces. It seems like, and and I don't like it. You know, I think I think what we've we've done here is we've we've smoked out a rat, Leroy, and that rat's name is Chris Sims. You know, we we have a motto on this hour of the program, and that is Chris Sims can go to hell, and he has come out. And he has declared his winners of the draft real original, you know, and he has not only said that the Dolphins are one of his winners, he has gotten to call that he has declared them the winner of the draft. So he has given out the Chris Sims world title. All right. The belt. And is basically wrapping it around the waist of Chris Greer. And it just rings hollow to me. You, you, you know, you, you spend this entire year, you, you rip to a tongue of Iloa. You act like you're not ripping them. All right. <laughs> and it's like, uh, you, you got to pick a side already. You, you're going to rip Chris Greer for taking a quarterback that you said sucked. Or you're going to say he's a genius and knows what he's doing. Yeah, you pick a side, Chris Sims. And so here he is. This was on his uh, pro football, whatever the hell it's called. And uh, him declaring the Dolphins the winners of the draft. The team that won the draft. If you make me pick one team, it, it, I'm going with the Miami Dolphins. Just and, and I know you're right. We'll see how it plays out. We got to see how the season goes. But the Miami Dolphins continue to you know show the NFL or give a lesson in team building. I mean that's really where I just come away with it. I mean first off with the first pick with Waddle, you got the two big receivers on the outside and Gasecki at tight end. Now you got this guy with all these rockets up his butt flying around the field. Are you kidding me? Then you get the pass rusher Jalen Phillips. It's the only thing they need on defense is maybe. Be just a difference making edge pass rusher oh wait they got the guy that's went to college in their city so i'm sure they know really a ton about him and so they get him javon holland the safety there you know just another i think the thing that i like about it is they're kind of like mike a lot of their guys even though we don't know how good they're going to be i can sit here and tell you i don't they're not going to be bad they're going to be contributing to their football team. Holland was a really good safety, one of the best in the draft. You get Liam Eichenberg, an NFL-ready right now left tackle from Notre Dame who can play guard and has played guard. So now they got him, contributor, high-end backup right off the backup, right off the bat. And then Hunter Long. Hunter Long is a big blocking, you know, tight end who has a little value in the past game. So I just, to me, the way they thought out the draft, the picks they made, you know, a little bit of, you know, aggressiveness and, hey, we'll take a chance on a Jalen Phillips. We think the worth the, the, the risk is worth the reward there and all of that. Uh, I was just blown away by the Dolphins draft. Well, I think we know what Chris, uh, Chris Sims' favorite footwear is, and that's flip-flop. I love how he's going to talk about the safety and he had nothing to say. Safety, that guy there. Yeah, that guy, one of the best safeties. You know him. Eichenberg, um, you know, always you always like to tell when you you make up stuff about a lineman where you're just like, ah, you can kick him into guard. That's always like a, a tell of a versus. It's like you're not saying he's bad, but you're also saying like you're making his versatility like a good thing too. Chris Sims. Well, that's that's the thing with offensive linemen. I've said that. I'll tell you. I'll for tell you. A while. What, you know what, Chris Sims? Nice try. I don't know if you're looking for a table of Joe Stone Crab or something like that, but I'll tell he, you what. He's thing. not back. You're not letting him in. Nah. Nah, I'll do it when you apologize to Tua Tonga Vailoa. Until then, you can praise all the people you want to praise, Chris. And by the way, beautiful soliloquy. All right. You, you, you've hopped on the train with everybody else because you know what it sounds like? Sounds like you looked up everybody else's draft and you said, oh, who won the draft? Because everyone's saying the Dolphins won the draft. You don't get to just hop along onto the train and say the Dolphins also won the draft. I think we're going to forgive you. That's not how this works, Leroy. You should be very familiar with the flip-flop line. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm the sh- hell you don't. Yeah, oh, oh, really? What have I flip-flopped about? I bought everything. Jimmy. Really? Yeah. Really? No, I didn't flip-flop about Jimmy. Oh, I said let's may just, have. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, may have with Jimmy. Yeah, so may have. you use some technicality now, there. Now there was some lying how, about, how about whether the Heat need a big or not? Uh, I didn't flip-flop on that. I was just wrong about that. Especially... <laughs> And especially, wait, and especially, wait, when you wait, okay, and especially, wait, so and especially, and especially, 
And particularly, you would rather admit you're wrong, which is the same thing as saying, "Oh, it's not, the Heat it's not, really it's not. did need a big." And, and, and really, they didn't need a big. I mean, if if I'm be, if I'm honest, they didn't they need a big. a big. What they needed was Dwayne Deadman, who's of this no. Heat culture. No, 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 no. Just, no, no, no. You can't just throw any seven footer in there, and they're going to do what Dwayne Deadman's doing. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not Drummond, saying that. Drummond's not heat but culture. you needed somebody to create some form of resistance. Yeah, but here's the in thing. the paint. But Dwayne Dedman, he empties the tank. All right. You need a guy who is going to come here and he's going to empty the tank. And that's what Dwayne Dedman does. So really For all three minute stretches. I will have take a I'll ha- I'll take a half L on that one. A lowercase no, L, if you will. No. A lowercase no, L. This is what you line. do. But I'm this not, is, but, you get the full L. This is no. not like Panthers tie loss. No, nope. this is a full L. Minus two points. No, the whole nine yards. I'm not taking minus two points. You get. You don't get a. Hat. You don't get a point for. No, we went to overtime, one. bro. Yes. No, we, minus uh, we went one. To, we went to overtime, and also Dwayne Dedman is is a special hey. kind of seven footer. He could do hey, it all. This isn't necessary, Leroy. You coined a new phrase: facts have changed, which means flip flop. No. It's true. No, really? Point to Twitcher. No! You just try to wash out your two minus ones. Point for Twitcher! No, no. No, no. Look, sometimes when evaluating situations, right, certain aspects of that situation change, and you have to be fluid. You have to be fluid. You have to be able to adjust your thinking with the changing of the circumstances. Uh, That's what I do. That's what I do. You, look, you have a hot take, you anchor in. You put that anchor down, you ain't moving. You and your sidekick who's not here today. No, that's not true, dude. First of all, don't get- guess what? Waddle, Jalen Waddle could be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. And Robbie's gonna say, and Robbie's gonna say that's not my point. You could have got somebody just as good in the third round. Right, you could have got the dude from Ole Miss. He's Elijah obsessed Moore. with the guy from Ole Miss. Elijah, Wait, Elijah Moore. Moore. Here's my biggest thing in the draft: if 32 teams also passed on him, that means that everybody in the NFL is on the same page, and Robbie's saying they're all wrong. Well, it's two things. It's it's one. It's it's that, and then it's it's also a product of the Alabama system, and none of these guys ran the forty. Like that's what he's obsessed with. You know who else is a product of the of the system? Julio mm. Jones, um, Derrick Henry. Uh, who else? Uh, there, there's a ton of players. Amari Cooper that are a product of the system, and they turned Mary, out pretty good. Jerry Judy. Yeah, Jerry yeah. Judy. Henry Ruggs. Like. What about all it? The last wait. If I'm not mistaken, all of the running back, all the wide receivers that have come from Alabama in the last five years. Yeah. Product of Alabama, really? We mean win national championships and they call up in the NFL and ball. Anyway, my point is, Chris Sims, shut the hell up. All right, don't tell us we won <laughs> the draft. I don't want your endorsement. Okay, <laughs> leave that to Mel <laughs> Kiper. Yeah. I, I, you want to know when you can come at me with uh, the Dolphins won the draft? When you apologize to Tua Tungavailoa, then I'll sit here and I'll hear out your draft analysis. That's not the way it works, though. It is how it works. No, I've just declared that how it works. If you if you are on a, on uh, if you on a hot take channel, right? And that's any whether it's radio, TV, YouTube, Twitch. If you're on a hot take channel, you just keep it moving. Like Robbie's gonna hose every player in the in the draft down, and when the draft's over. He doesn't see if he was right or wrong. He just moves on to next year's draft. He's already looking at 2022. Right. He already has his mock draft for next year ready. Right. Uh, mock draft number Sam one Howell. for next year. Look as, the party in the chat. Oh, no. Robbie's here. Why is that? There he is. <laughs> there he is. He's uh, He is there. Robbie the Degenerate has joined the chat at 820 today. Uh, to get in his uh, to get in his takes a little later than I thought. I thought it would have been early. Well, you know what? Great. You know, I'll move to this because I do want to get to this uh, this call out real quick. But uh, I want to I want to know what he has to say to this. So apparently, uh, this is from his idol, Mel Kiper Leroy. All right, <laughs> and Mel Kiper, you know, I mean, it's it's this is this is his guy. He loves everything that he has to say. Now, Mel Kiper has given the Dolphins a high grade for the draft. But uh, Mel Kuyper, he says, looking at this roster, 
I don't think it's far away from being a Super Bowl contender. That is Mel Kuyper on the Miami Dolphins. His guy. There's two teams that I thought this about. I would say that there's really no, besides running back and, and just a burner on offense, what do you say the Dolphins' needs are? They just need to get better, right? And the other team that's like that is the Cleveland Browns. Like any position that they were to bring in, it would be depth. Now, you can still have questions about the quarterback if you want, and that's in both instances. You can still have questions about the quarterback. I think it's still a pretty big question. Like, I I mean, like I I like Tua, but I think calling – like saying the Dolphins aren't far away from being a Super Bowl contender with the idea that you don't know how good Tua is yet. Like, would you call the – would you say that about the Chargers? And and, and they feel like they're more confident about the quarterback going into this year. Here's the difference. Here's the difference why. Because the one trait that people just overlook about Tua is that he had 11 touchdowns and five picks. Dude, that's unheard of for a rookie. I don't care whether you're checking down or whatever. That stat right there means to me that if you surround him with enough talent, and and I'm not saying that you have to, but what I'm saying is is that if he has an uh, an all-star defense, if he has a defense that gets after the quarterback and, and, and is, say, a top five defense, he gets a complimentary running game. He won't have to do much. He can just be 11 and 5. 11 touchdowns and five picks. That ratio would be unbelievable. Yeah, but to me, there's a difference in the idea of them being a division contender and then being a Super Bowl contender. Like, I do think that once you get to those games in the playoffs, like just being a guy who's a caretaker is not good enough to get you to I'm, the I'm game. I'm not saying he's going to be a caretaker, but what I'm saying is, is that the one trait that I would take from last year, given that counter, everybody else thinks everything else is going to improve. If they didn't, they would have got rid of it. Okay, that's the honest truth. That's where we are in football right now. But the one trait that everybody seems to overlook is the fact that you have a rookie quarterback with no offseason and no training camp and no preseason games in his first action – and only threw five picks, and three of them came in one game. I know. Like, I well, I heard Channing yesterday. Channing is declaring uh, last year uh, not a true rookie season. Like, he's declaring this year a, uh, a, his rookie season. But, like, you wouldn't say any team that has a rookie quarterback, you wouldn't proclaim them not far away from the Super Bowl. You wouldn't do it. But, but again, you wouldn't – no, you wouldn't do it. But, but what I would say is, is that when you see that – and you think to yourself, if I had a quarterback that just does that, right, I can build on that because I have one thing that I can keep in mind. Defensively, I can take more chances because I know he's not going to throw the ball to the other team, right? It, it Like, you may not like the overall numbers, but that one stat right there, that changes how you can do things on the other side of the ball that changes the chances you can take on offense. It changes a lot of your team when you know that your quarterback is not going to throw to the other team. I'm look, I I think that the dolphins are putting together a very good roster. And I think that there are a lot of good things. For example, I just think, I I just think going to that leap to me, like, you know, saying they're not far away from Super Bowl. That just seems like, I I think, I think it's important to see what this year is to see where all that growth is. Cause the Dolphins also have a very young roster. Don't forget. Like they've gotten rid of first, you know? Yeah. They've gotten rid of Van Noy. They've gotten rid of, uh, of Fitzpatrick, two of their old heads on, on each side of the football. Don't, don't all of a sudden just say it as happenstance. You were happy. Oh, Fitzpatrick was gone. Yeah. Oh, hell yes. Think about this. I'm so sick of that show pony. I'm glad he's out of here. Think of, think of what, um, um, Jameis Winston did in Tampa before Tom Brady got there, Mm -hmm. right? And what was the biggest knock on him? And the coach even said it. I can win with anybody, but not a 30 and 30 guy. Yeah, he just happened to get the greatest quarterback of all time. Well, Yeah, he did. But but what I'm saying is this. He threw for a bunch of yards. He had 
a bunch of touchdowns, but his decision making put that team in a terrible spot because defensively they couldn't take a lot of chances because they knew that offensively he was going to turn the ball over. Um, so how about this? So Terry right. Bradshaw, oh, he's doing that. He's 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 now doing the thing where he's calling out the uh, call shut out up the and play couple. guys. So I know no, he called out. Normally he's uh, his, his favorite is to go with. Uh, it's usually Steelers on Steelers crime because he's had a long time beef with uh, Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. But uh, but now he has uh, set his sights on Aaron Rodgers. And uh, mm-hmm. his, his, uh, he was on Moose and Maggie on WFAN. Of course, you can listen to them on the Odyssey app, if you please. Um, and he says, quote, with him being upset, it shows me how weak he is. Who the hell cares who you draft? I mean, he's a three-time MVP in this league, and he's worried about a guy that got drafted last year at number one. And for me uh, and for him to be upset, my God, I don't understand that. Pittsburgh drafted Mark Malone, number one, Cliff Stout in the third and fourth round. I had them come for me at all angles. I embraced it because when we went to practice, I wasn't worried about those guys. You know, they didn't scare me one bit. So I don't understand why he's so upset at Green Bay. And then if they fire the general manager, he'll come back. Are you kidding me? I mean, really, Aaron, that's where this is. Let, let's let's clarify something. OK, he is not worried about Jordan Love. He is not worried about any of the quarterbacks he brings in. What he is saying is, for so many years, we've been so close to winning a Super Bowl, and you have not drafted only one offensive player in the last 10 years? Yeah. Okay? That's what he's saying. He's not talking about – he's asking, look, whoever you want to play quarterback, give them some weapons. That's what he's been complaining about for the last few years. And your one time to one time – you decide to draft offense, you draft the quarterback. He's not saying he's afraid of the quarterback. He's saying that you didn't even draft somebody that can help the team. So I love the way people have hot takes about certain situations without fully understanding what the situation is. And also, I got to deal with this too. Time has changed. You Time know, when you, were a quarter, when you were a quarterback in NFL, Terry Bradshaw, you couldn't go nowhere. You couldn't do nothing. They owned you forever until they were done. Then you could go somewhere when you were done, when they were done with you. Then you could go to another team. Times have changed. The way the, 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 way the salary cap is, the way people do contracts, the way they, you know, the way you can go to a different team. Like everything has changed. So you need to be clear about what Aaron Rodgers has a problem with. I don't think there's a way in hell that Aaron Rodgers is afraid of a quarterback. He's not. He's well, the guy when everybody was held to a scouter telling fans to relax. Would seem pretty silly that the year that he's a uh, the year after they drafted that then he won won the MVP to right. say that he's mentally weak that they drafted right, the guy. Right, right, that's my point, but but to make to 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 like, it's okay to have a hot take. I don't have a problem with anybody having a hot take. But you got to clarify your story because your hot take really has nothing to do with what just happened in Green Bay. It doesn't. Like, he's saying he's soft? Oh, really? You, you t- you're saying the guy's mentally weak when they draft the quarterback and then you go and win the MVP? That's not being soft. That's being mentally strong. That's being fighting through it, regardless of what people think of you. Robbie lookalike on Twitch says Aaron Rodgers can be a crybaby on my team. Me too. Me I too. The, me too. I Daddy love up. it. Daddy I would. Up. I would swaddle Aaron Rodgers. Daddy I would give him a pacifier. Give a I would have picks for him too. Here. Yeah. I would. I would. Think I would. Rock, I would rock Aaron Rodgers to sleep every single night. Whatever. What's he my needs. saying, Toby? Tobin. I called him Toby. What's my saying? What is your t- life? Uh, is about tolerance, right? We deal with Aaron Rodgers because we definitely would tolerate him. Of course. And his his diva personality and his woe is me. Who cares? I would let him host Jeopardy between practices. Yes. I don't know, he doesn't even have to practice. I mean, just come yes. here. You know, just come here for games. You could be Alex Trebek yes. in the meanwhile. That's because cool. he's 
that good. And guess what? How many teams right now are thinking, if we had Aaron Rodgers, we competing for a championship right now? Yeah. Including the Dolphins. I'm not saying the Dolphins should do it. But I'm saying if 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 he was out there. I wouldn't rule out if the Dolphins really did have a chance at Aaron Rodgers. I wouldn't rule out Stephen Ross actually building a Jeopardy set at Hard Rock Stadium. I, I couldn't rule Rock, it out. In, in a green room on off to the side. Couldn't rule it out. Couldn't rule right. it out. You know, it's just just this is where the this is where Jeopardy is shot now, courtesy of Stephen Ross. I couldn't rule it out. You think right now there's a dolphin helicopter circling Aaron Rodgers' house dropping? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I think they're gonna go with what I think they are gonna let two. Somebody of said the guy. Aaron Rodgers going to Denver. If he goes to Denver, does that make them a, a Super Bowl contender? It helps. I tell you one thing that's interesting though, like if he ends up you know, with Denver, uh and there's actually some interesting Denver Dolphin stuff that actually happened during the draft that I'll tell you about coming up. But uh, that would be too – imagine uh, Denver with – and I know John Elway's lost some power, but imagine Denver having a situation where they've had Peyton Manning and Aaron Rodgers both come and propel, r- repel right into their franchise. Let, let's, let's say this. Aaron Rodgers is a lot better off than Peyton Manning was when he got to Denver. Uh, yeah, by the end. I mean, remember, don't forget, he, t- he threw 50 touchdowns one year. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the year they lost in the AFC Championship game. Yes, yeah, and then the next year they won the Super Bowl when he was terrible. No, they, no, they, they lost. They, they lost, lost in the, the Super Bowl against the Ravens. That was the, I think it was Jacoby Jones from the Ravens caught the. Oh, touchdown. in the corner, right, right. Oh, right. that's right. And then they lost in the Super Bowl, and then they won when he was a bum. Right. Okay. So they got what they get three years out of. They him? got three good years out of him. That's it. Oh, wait, if you're telling me you could give Aaron Rodgers three years. How many teams will say, I'm in? Oh, man. What? Right. But why are they playing him like that, though? This will make him feel better because this is a guy that he wanted. He wanted Javante Williams uh, and the Dolphins to draft him. But this comes from NFL.com. And apparently, it was uh, the Dolphins were, were planning to take him. Now, that was the, uh, the idea. But it says, uh, with the Broncos holding the eighth pick in the second round, uh, the GM eyeballed North Carolina's Javante William, a hard-running, tackle-breaking halfback he had hoped to pair with the incumbent Melvin Gordon. After getting some intel from an unnamed source, the Dolphins were four spots in front of Denver and were planning to select Williams. Peyton hastily negotiated a trade with the Atlanta Falcons to jump one pick ahead of Miami. Another uh, rookie GM in Atlanta uh, asked for Patton's fourth-round pick. He agreed, but successfully pushed Atlanta's pick near to the end of the sixth round saying, come on, Terry, it's a great deal. Shortly after swooping in to take Williams with the number three, 35 overall pick, he got a text from a person in the draft room uh, from one of the Dolphins' AFC East rivals congratulating him on thwarting Miami's draft plans. So this rat bastard GM, this uh, this George Patton, the, uh, the new GM of the Broncos, he uh, he screwed Chris Greer's plans. You know what that him, means? Roy. That means that now more smoke. Oh, because clearly I mean, if everybody I mean, thought you were going to get him and they knew of your plans. Yep. You're not putting out enough smoke. You think, yeah, he's got to He's got to go out there and he's got to uh, put more kindling out there on the fire. So nobody knows. Exactly. I mean, it was kind of blatantly obvious. The Dolphins. I mean, everybody knew the Dolphins need a running back. It's, well, it's well, one of the- Yeah. But again, well, we've been upset if they had taken one of the two running backs at 18. I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been. I get, but I, but, I get. But who they picked, can you understand why they didn't take a running back? Oh, yeah, I predicted them to take right. him. That's who I thought they were going to end up taking. I thought that they were probably going to go. I was actually surprised that Travis Etienne went as high as he did. I thought he would go before I, Najee. Harris. I didn't. I thought that Najee was going to go first, especially with all those reports of uh, the Steelers who ended up getting him. Uh, that, that there was no smoke around that. Everybody kind of just agreed. Okay, Najee is going to go. He's going to be the first guy taken, and apparently he's going to fall to the Steelers. I was a little surprised. I thought Travis Etienne. There was a chance he wasn't going to be in the first round, and that was going to push everything down. But and the and certainly the Jaguars taking him surprised me, even with the pairing of uh of uh, of Trevor Lawrence, just because they have a good running back. So I, I was annoyed with Urban Meyer when you use him as a third down back. Really? Yeah, well, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I, I, I am. Etienne is not third down back, dude. That's why. Yeah, 
I'm already I, well. I'm annoyed with Urban Meyer nonstop because, by the way, he comes out this week and he's talking about I don't like the way our tight end position is, and so that's why we worked out Tim Tebow, who, by the way, is his neighbor. Like, bro, can you guys get out of this little Gainesville fantasy pixie land that you're in? It's enough. Well, first, first of all, then he should be fired on the spot. Really, if he doesn't like if he doesn't like tight ends, and the person he went to is Tim Tebow playing tight end. Mm-hmm. He can't be my coach. Hey, I'm with you. Hey, hey, come on. Think about this. I'm with you. All the tight ends across all of the world. He decides. <laughs> Teeps. Teeps. Oh, no, you didn't even call him. Yeah, let me just. Hey. What's up, Teeps? Hey, uh, you guys. You uh, what do you guys what You guys want to watch The Voice tonight? Hey, Teeps, what do you think about uh, suiting up again? You know, we'll give you another chance at professional sports. Just, uh, it's just so, it's so disheartening. I'm going to tell, so tell you, I'm going to tell you like this. It's funny how things work because everybody looks at Tim Tebow and say, oh, Tim Tebow, Tim Tebow. But I tell you what, Tim Tebow should have been tight end right out of college. Sure. But for some reason, he thought he had it like that, that he could demand he only play quarterback. Uh, This is what Urban Meyer said to Pro Football Talks, Mike Florio. We had a conversation about Tim Tebow working out. He worked out with our tight ends coach. I stopped by, did not stay for the whole workout. Yeah, you know why? Because it was Tim Tebow playing tight end. That's why. Sure you didn't. Then our focus went to the NFL draft. You know, the fact that this is even in the midst of the draft annoys me. Like, focus on the draft. You got a big draft coming up. You know, maybe the biggest Jaguars draft of all time. Number one overall pick. And here's this guy out here playing fantasy camp. He worked out with our tight ends coaches, stopped by, didn't stay for the whole workout. Then our focus was the NFL draft. We're going to revisit here in the near future. That's how it all happened. He goes, I have one job, and that is to win games with the Jacksonville Jaguars. If Tim Tebow or Travis ATN can help us win, then it's my job to get them ready to go play. No, it's not. Okay. He was a baseball player for the last three years and not a good one. What are we talking about here? How many guys, you, you know, know what, like, you know what Tim Te- Tebow is? Body by Jake. He did all that stuff to get a nice body, to get swole, to get, to do the workout. But the fact of the matter is, is that he wasn't talented enough to play at this level. Now he had some spots. He had some moments, you know, he tricked everybody into thinking, Oh, all he does is win. Oh, that stupid okay. game against the Dolphins, remember? Really? Uh, do I? He threw what, three passes? Yep. I mean, like the last yeah. like minute. So But how about the idea, like, like, you know, like we just had this whole thing with Jason Witten where like he came out of the booth. At least Jason Witten was an all pro tight end for his career, took a break. This no, guy he's never got played no, tight doesn't end. he have more catches than anybody? Like it's between him and Tony Gonzalez, right? Yeah, but like this is uh, this is what he did. Okay, he took a break and came back. Tim Tebow was like not he was not only not yeah. playing football he was playing baseball and before that wasn't playing football because he was just on rosters doing nothing he's got a thousand catches okay how many nfl catches does tebow have i don't know I, i'm gonna go out on a limb and say none i don't want to okay that. i mean maybe that one I know. that being said to even mention tim tebow playing tight end in the same sentence with Witten is ridiculous. 